Praise God. Okay, we've uh, been looking at faith, and uh, we're going to continue on that subject. And uh, I always wanted to know basically how, how faith worked. And as I had spoken in my prior teachings that uh, I had uh, half of uh, the information in regards to faith. I mean, I had faith, but I didn't have hope. So, you know, I was always coming up short and wondering why, and I was thinking it didn't work. See, well, well, of course it didn't work. I didn't have the other part to it. So once, <laughs> once I got the other part to it, I see that this, it works. See, and, and, and that's a blessing for me because, like, here again, this is something I don't want to be playing. This is something I want to uh, see activated, not only in my life, and in the lives of those that are, you know, studying along with us uh, in, in regards to faith. So, like, the Bible says in Romans 4, 16, before I open up a prayer, it says that, yeah, uh, it is a faith that it might be by grace. Now, faith is the only action on man's part to bring forth the blessings without ruining the principle of grace. See, so it's important to understand that, you know, faith activates uh, a lot of what God has given us. And that's one thing to know this, you know, and it's another thing to have wisdom to apply this. So faith is actually taking something. Faith is actually saying something, actually saying what God says, because um, once you say what God says, that's the God kind of faith. So with that, let's open up in prayer, and then we'll get into uh, uh, the word of faith. Amen? Father, I want to thank you and just praise you for just the spirit of wisdom. Father, I want to thank you that you continue to open the eyes of our, our understanding, Father. And I think it's the best gifts of the spirit always in, in operation in us and through us, Father, and that we continue to open our mouth wide and boldly proclaim the gospel message of grace, Father. Father, I thank you that the scriptures are open to our understanding. I thank you that we are uh, vessels of honor, fit for the master's use, Father. And I thank you that you continue to work not only in us, but through us, confirming your word, Father, with signs far, uh, following. And Father, I thank you that you always hear us, Father. And this is the confidence that we can have in you, that if we ask anything according to your word, Father, not only do you hear us, but you uh, answer us, Father. And we have the petition which we, we request of you. So Father, we thank you and just praise you, Father, that we have ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive your engrafted words, Father. And we give you all the praise, glory, and honor, and thanksgiving for all that shall be said this night in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. amen. Praise God. So I was looking at our, um, Hebrews 4, 2, and it says, it says, word, the word that they heard, not being mixed with faith, it says, profit them nothing. So the word has to be mixed with the, the substance of faith. It has to, there has to be some hope involved in this in order for faith to even be activated. So when we go over and we look at Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we see that faith comes forth based, based solely on hope. See, uh, it says faith is the substance of hope. And then I had uh, an opportunity to really just look at what God was saying through Paul there speaking in Hebrews. You know, it's, it's impossible for us to see in the unseen realm without even even having hope. We can't even see into the unseen realm. And that's important to understand because it says it's the evidence. What is? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. See, so if we want to see in the unseen realm, then we have to add hope along with faith. Because like, we know that the, the word is spirit, and the word is also life. So I, I, I was looking at, you know, me not being a forgetful hearer and being able to see that I don't want to be that double-minded man trying to mix law and, and, and grace together. So when I look at a Romans 1, 17, let's turn over there, Romans 1, 17. It's basically a, a verse of scripture that we've been basically using for foundational uh, purposes, but it's a lot being said right there in that verse of scripture when you actually you look at it because it says, that's Romans 1.17, and it reads, um, no, excuse me, I'm going to start reading in uh, Romans 1.16. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know, I want you to notice it says uh, the gospel. It's not just any gospel. It says uh, the gospel, the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation 
but it's to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It says, for therein, therein what? Therein the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, and it's from faith to faith as it is written. This is how we should live. The Bible says we should live by faith. See, and that's important to understand. If he said this is how we should live, then we need to have a, a working understanding, basically, on faith, on what faith is. So when we look at it, we want to hear it says, faith is always now. It's always present tense. It's now. It's not tomorrow. It's not yesterday. It's, it's now. That's why it says now. Faith is. See, and Mike, once again, I want to just reiterate on this here, that faith involves hope. Hope gives substance to faith. See, without hope, there's no faith. And when you go over, and let's look at Romans 4. I want to show you something. Even like, even when Abraham, it says, it started off. He says, he hoped against hope. And, and, and by him hoping against hope, he says he wasn't weak in faith. Because, see, the hope was involved there. See, so when you go over, let me, I'm just going to read a couple of verses over here in Romans chapter 4. A verse, I'm going to start reading in uh, Verse 17 says, as it is written, he says, I have made thee, I have made thee a father of many nations. This is before uh, Abraham had, had had one child. He says, before whom, before him whom uh, he believed, even God, who quickeneth, gives life to the dead, and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Now, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according that to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now, and, and, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. And he says, he staggered not at the promise, the promise of God. How, 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 how do you sta stagger at, at the promise of God? It says, through unbelief, but was strong in faith, See, there was a hope there. Regardless of what was going on in his body, he was giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he, Abraham understood that God was able to perform. And for me, that is, it's a blessing for me just to understand Abraham, had, he exhibited this kind of faith, and he was just a servant. See, he was just a servant. And I like when you go in the scriptures and you, and you look back at what Jesus said in reference to Abraham. He says, Abraham, he says, desired to see my day. He says, and he saw it. How did he see it? Through faith. That's how he saw it. He saw it through faith. And then uh, what Paul speaks over there, uh, Galatians 3, 29, when he says, if you're Abraham's seed, no, he says, if you're Christ, excuse me, he says, you're Abraham's seed, and he says, and you're heir according to the promise. So we see here that Abraham, when he saw that there was no hope, he hoped anyway. See, he had a, he had a desire. He, there, was, there was an image. He, he saw it anyway. He saw what God had said. See, when you look at the word of faith that we preach, see, the word is faith. See, when God spoke, that was the word of faith. See, because he already, he knew that he was going to see what he said. So he spoke it, knowing that he was going to see it. Now, that, and that's the God kind of faith. See, the God kind of faith is saying what God saying, says, knowing that you're going to see exactly what you say. So when I, I went over and I looked uh, again at uh, Romans uh, 4, 16, and it says, now, therefore, he says, it is a faith that it might be of grace to the end that the promise might be sure, why? To all the seed, that is, to all of the seed, and he's talking about the seed that Christ became. Now, we're part of that seed. We're part of Abraham's seed. We are, see, and it's important to understand that when you look back and we see that we're heirs, you've got to look back and see what we're heirs of. The Bible says Abraham was heir of the world, see, and so that means everything that belongs or pertains to the world here, as far as health and riches and restored relationships, protection, and all the things that come along with being saved. And this, this, it's more than just missing that place and making heaven. Because like I've heard, and I used to think in order for me to get to heaven, I had to uh, live right. No. Not in order to get to heaven, all you gotta do is die right. I said, that's all you gotta do to get to heaven. And dying right is dying in Christ. 
You see, see, but if I think that I have to do right in order to get to heaven, then it becomes a work. So it becomes a wage. No, Christ has already paid the price. See, so in order for me to get there, all I have to do is just know that I am I'm in him when I die. And then it's, I got heaven made in the shade. Now, but if the benefits, there's benefits here that God says that are ours, right? Well, God says he's already freely given us all things. So when you look back and you look at how God has blessed him, Abraham received all of this by faith. Everything that he received from God, he says, uh, he received it through faith. He says he just believed what God said, and he says, and he became right with God. It was accounted to him as righteousness. So faith accesses the graces of God. And when you look at Ephesians Two eight, two, eight, and nine. Go over there. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, For by grace you are saved, but it's through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's, it, it's a gift of God. So if not of works, at least any man should boast. See, so. What God has given us, he's given us as a gift. And you know, when I was looking, I used to have a knowledge of God's word. And because he says now, we need to get a knowledge or get revelation of God's word. So that's why we study. But do you know, he says, wisdom is the principal thing. He says, so therefore get wisdom. So God wants us to have the, uh, that ability to be able to apply the revelation or the knowledge that we get. Then that's what wisdom is, is being able to apply it. I thought wisdom was just, you know, growing old. You know, our wisdom was getting, you know, a couple of degrees, uh, you know, at, at one of those higher uh, schools of uh, inst institutions of learning. But no, wisdom is something that cannot be bought. Wisdom is who we receive. Because the Bible tells us that Christ becomes to us, first of all, he says, wisdom. And then he says righteousness. See, so that's why he says wisdom is, 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 is an important thing. And see, when you, when you look at how wisdom was distributed to, uh, to uh, Solomon, see, Solomon asked that God would give him an understanding heart. And once he received that understanding heart, he, and now he received this all by faith. Once he received that understanding heart, all the other things just came along with wisdom. See, all the other trappings that, that, man, that God says that, us, that are ours are being uh, uh, that of a seed of, of Abraham. So the Bible says we're saved by faith through grace. Now, I went over and I looked at a couple of uh, examples in reference uh, to faith because, you know, a lot of times this we, we look at something and we read into what's not there. We read out of what's not there. And see, and when you look at how simple Jesus was when he dealt, you know, what situations are dealt with, you know, the disciples, you'll see that at times there was, they were faithless. And at times uh, there was little faith. And at times there was, there was great faith, uh, you know. And, and, and I always like, you know, to to uh, see where was I at uh, in that equation. And a lot of times, you know, the faith that I was trying to exercise, I, w I thought it was mine all the time, you know. I thought it was my faith, but I come to find out it was not mine. That too was a gift, uh, the faith that I had received, because like the Bible tells us, he's given unto every man the, the, the measure of faith. And it's something for us to, to, to look at when, when we are are dealing in situations because, like, it's God's faith that, that brings things uh, around uh, in our lives. And that's why we got to keep our eyes on him. So I went over and I looked at uh, Romans 10, uh, 46. Uh, let's turn over there. Not Romans 10, 46, excuse me. Mark 10, 46. Start reading right there. Mark, the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 10, I'm going to start reading in, uh, yeah, I'm going to start reading in verse uh, 46. It says, and um, they came to Jericho, and as he went, 
out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Now notice, I want you to notice something. Say he heard, he, see, it, he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, and he began to cry out. See, he had to say something. And he says, Jesus, thou son of David, he says, uh, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should, you know, hold his peace. But he cried even the, the more, and a great deal, more, a great deal. Thou son of David, he says, have mercy on me. Now, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And uh, they called the blind man, saying unto him, he says, be of good cheer. He says, rise. Uh, he calleth you. He's calleth thee. And first of all, I want you to notice that it's not what blind Bartimaeus saw that changed his life. It's what he heard. See, and that's important. See, and hearing is very important in this here. See, you want to hear what God has to say. And once you hear it, you want to have the wisdom to apply what you hear. And God has given to each and every one of us the spirit of wisdom. See, we have the spirit of revelation, and we have also the, the spirit of wisdom once we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And in verse 50, it says, and cast away, uh, casting away his garments, first of all, he says, he rose, and he says, and he came to Jesus, and, and, uh, and Jesus answered and said unto him, he says, now what wilt what will thou, uh, will thou that I should do unto thee? I mean, I mean, Jesus could see that he was blind, but he says, well, what, what do you want me to do for you, uh, Mr. Uh, Bartimaeus, and he says, and the blind man said unto him, he says, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, he says, go thy way. He says, uh, thy faith has made thee holy. And he says, this is the part I really like. And immediately he received. He says, and immediately he received his sight. He says, and immediately he received his sight. And you know, I always like when I, I was looking, I was thinking about that too. And like he told uh, Zacchaeus, the guy that was up in the tree in chapter, uh, I believe,